This is Mortgage Lending Mastery. Get the knowledge you need from America's Mortgage Mentor. With more than 35 years of experience and over $1 billion in lifetime fundings, you'll learn to advance your mortgage practice quickly and efficiently. Also, be sure to check out Jen's book, Launch, How to Take Your Business to New Heights. Available on Amazon. For a signed copy, contact Jen at jenduplessis.com. Now, here is Certified Mortgage Planner and CEO of Kinetic Spark Consulting, Jen Duplessis. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Mortgage Lending Mastery. Thank you so much for joining us today. If this is your first time, thank you. Thank you. Please subscribe. Please give us a five-star rating, and please write us a review. That's so important for our success, and I appreciate all of you that have done that and continue to do that. And if it's your third, fourth, 100th time listening, thank you again for all of your support. We really appreciate it. And I love the feedback that we're getting about what you want to hear. You know, is we, gosh, you know, we put this out four and a half years ago. It was the first podcast that really got traction for lenders. And um, we continue to kind of morph, you know, into different, different things. But it's all about your personal and your professional development. And so today, I have the wonderful privilege of having Ben Lavender with me. I'm having a hard time talking for some reason. <laughs> uh, ben Lavender with me today, and he is with Affordable Financial Services. He is a loan originator, and we're going to spend a few minutes talking about his practice and how he has reached his level of success in a very, very short period of time, and maybe pick up some nuggets from him on what you could do in 2022, move your business forward as we're recording this really close to Halloween on 2019. Yes. <laughs> so Ben, welcome to our show. Jen, yes, thank you so much for having me. I'm uh, excited to be here on this gloomy Tuesday in New York. It's kind of ugly. It's the here. same here. Yeah, it's kind of nasty down in DC too. So, but it, so it gives us something to do, right? Now, we're, now we have something to do. So let's get started by having you tell us a little bit about you. So how did you get into mortgage lending? How long have you been in? And kind of give us a synopsis of what your practice looks like right now from a units and dollar perspective, as well as a team, if you have one. Got it. Okay. So it, uh, I've been in the business for, I think, about seven, eight years now. I started very, very early uh, when I was 22. I actually, it was my first job out of college. And uh, to be completely honest, I had like zero sales ability, zero sales training. I was taught everything from the ground up and had very, very good mentors that were good to me, who I still talk to to this day. And, um, you know, just kind of spent the first couple of years in the business learning how to structure deals, how everything works. I mean, I when I say I had no idea, Jen, I'm, I'm not exaggerating. I right. I don't think any of us do. And, you know, and I do recall, you know, you and I had the wonderful opportunity of sharing an Uber, right, from Mile High Mastermind in Denver a couple of months yeah. ago. You know, and I recall that you had said that you were just everybody's beck and call guy. You know, every loan officer that you could get your hands on to learn from you were, you were learning from them. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, knowledge is, is power, as they say, and it's, it, there's two parts to it, right? One part of it is, you know, the motiva uh, motivational aspect, because I generally, Jen, I'm not a huge fan of masterminds in general, because it's typically just something to upsell you into like coaching or whatever, and they don't give you anything real to implement. However, Mile High was very, very different. Uh, we know the crew, you know, I've known them for a long time, but, um, you know, so that's one part of it is basically having the information to implement and then getting to know like-minded people or even better people that are far higher than you are. Yeah. And that's the way that I always see the business. Even if, you know, I'm top one, top two, top three, whatever in my company, it doesn't matter because there's always someone else out there who's producing more than I am. And that's the person I need to look at, not who's you know, around me here or, you know, the, the mortgage company next door. It's just how can we always grow to the next level? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So what does 2019 look like for you? What's, how's it been for you? Because we all started off worried, right? Yeah. And then we went to, oh my gosh, now we have a ton of businesses. It's my best year ever. Exactly. How so, that and that's what I keep, I, I'd like to think that I'm having such a fantastic year because, 
you know, I'm so amazing, but I, I really don't think that's the case. I think it's a combination of a couple things. So, Jen, I recently switched to uh, the broker platform. I was in retail for six, seven years. And again, I don't want to turn this into a broker's a better conversation, but yeah. uh, for me, it was just, you know, a couple things there that, you know, I have a very, very big competitive advantage over my competitors. So that's part of it. And um, in addition to that, obviously, the purchase and the refi market going on at the same time. But for me, Jen, I don't know if you've seen any of my, uh, my videos. I do once a week. I do um, just some type of educational video that I push out there to consumers and to realtors. And I actually get quite a bit of business from it. So my mindset going into it was to do you know, just do them for fun and not expect anything from it. Mm -hmm. And if I get business from it, great. It was a whole like, then don't expect to see results for at least nine months. And I've only been doing it for maybe seven, no, that's not true, about nine, 10 weeks. And mm -hmm. I've already gotten not only deals that I've already closed from it, but relationships with realtors who are sending me business as well. So they're proving to be very, very powerful. So for me in 2019, that's been kind of the game changer. Yeah, yeah. And I want to dive deeper into that here in just a few minutes. Um, so one of the things that I had talked about in a podcast a few weeks ago um, that was released a few weeks ago is short-term gain for long-term pain, right? Mm. The opposite of what everyone else is talking about. Yeah. And, you know, it always concerns me because in my, my career, I have seen so many ups and downs, you know, and, and my ups and downs started with rates being at 18%, right? And coming down to 14 and the days that we had them at 12.95, they were funny how they were released that way. And, and then finally walking into single digits instead of double digits, you know, so I've seen a lot of ups and downs. And one of the things that I see that happens is that, um, just like realtors, you know, who listen to this podcast as well, they do re loan officers do really well when the market's good and then they don't do so well. And, and that was sort of the whining and complaining that we had exactly a year ago, you know. And so I want to know, what are you doing, Ben, to plant the seeds to have, aside from the video, because I want to get to that specifically, but what are you doing in your practice to plant the seeds so that you don't have long term pain? when this market does shift from us? Uh, I th something that I neglected for a long, uh, a long time is um, my customer database, yeah. past clients, because I was so focused on generating business with realtors. And then as time went on, I was getting business from my clients without even really doing anything. Mm -hmm. So using stuff like HomeBot, which over here yeah. in New York, no one, no one uses HomeBot, right? But it's made a dramatic difference. And then... Uh, what I'll also do for every single client, whether it's a, a birthday or just some, some occasion to touch base, I'm very, very big on video. So I'll send them a video happy birthday message, personalized always. It is a little bit exhausting, I do admit, um, but it's, I think it's important. And honestly, I really do enjoy my clients not all of them of course you got those that, that drive you a little crazy but yeah I'd so say you don't majority. have to send a birthday video to them <laughs> yeah well well even those i do because yeah, <laughs> you yeah. don't want, you don't want them to run into someone i didn't get mine um <laughs> but for the most part i really really do enjoy them and a cool aspect of this business i think is the relationship building mm -hmm. right it's like getting to know people i've got some relationships that I'm still doing business from, from my first year in the business, uh, business to this day. And even though I didn't really do anything special other than provide good customer service and listen to them, um, I'm still getting business from them today. So with, with that said, something I do think for other, uh, you know, if you're a loan originator, try and think, hey, if I just send videos and, you know, enroll them in HomeBots and whatever CRM post-closing, that's cool. You know, it's good to do, but if, if you didn't have that initial like bond with the client, it's not really going to mean so much. They're just going to feel like they were on some type of list that you closed. Right. You know, so, right. But for all of them, it's like I had Lord knows how many conversations, you know, going back and forth and going through the process. And that's what really built the connection. And then all the follow up after that is just um, secondary to that.
Okay, so let's talk about that as it relates to the process and we'll get to the leads. Yeah. Because I know that, um, so what are you doing? I'm not gonna give it away. <laughs> what are you doing that's different during the process that creates that strong bond with your clients? <laughs> not just another transaction for you or that you're just not some other mortgage broker guy for them. Yeah. It, it all goes back to video. Um, same thing. So obviously in the very beginning we're doing the whole pre-approval stage. So I don't, I also don't mind kind of giving away the secret because the, the truth is if someone had, you know, the tenacity to do it, they would have done it already. And Correct. nine times out, you know, out of 10, if they listen, they won't do it anyway. So right. for right. first client, you know, even just sending them a pre-approval documentation checklist, we send them a video greeting them. Hey, how do you prefer to communicate? We go over everything. Uh, and then I'll enroll them in like what I call a 14 day, 15 day blitz of how the process works from start to finish. Because uh, most of my clients are first-time home buyers, and they're very, very intimidated by you know what's going on. Like even the thought of an appraisal, because it's unexpected, it freaks them out. But yeah. if you if you prep them for it, it's like okay, it's time to do the appraisal. It's time to buy my home uh, uh, my home insurance. They're more ready to do it, and the process the is smoother. Yeah, the roadmap for them. Yeah. Exactly. So that's just the beginning. But like when we go into contract, we send them their disclosures. Hey, I know we went over this before, but just a reminder, your processor is going to reach out to you. If you have any questions, I'm always here. And then once the appraisal comes in, once we get a commitment, once it's, you know, clear to close, rate lock, every Mindset. single basic, yeah, every touch point of the transaction, they're getting either a video email or a text email or they're getting both right right and, and are they generic in nature or are you specifically doing that because that's very time consuming they are generic yeah right. then those aren't individualized because ooh, that, yeah, yeah, no, that. it's too difficult right mm -hmm. and so so how are you creating a bond with them if it's generic in nature is it through the video only um, it, or are there taps or sprinkles in there of personal touches? Uh, I wouldn't say there, what typically happens is that, well, cause I also don't want to overdo it right, right and, and drive them insane. So, yeah. mm -hmm. um, what typically happens every time I send a video, there's always some type of response, mm -hmm. right? It's, Oh, this was really, really cool. Thank you, Ben. I appreciate it. Hey Ben, I had another question. It's like, okay, cool. Let's get on the phone really quick. Yeah, so, so you're partnering with them. It's a partnership. Yeah. And, and I will say this, I feel like the, the difference is, is that if I didn't do it, they would not ask those questions and kind of start those additional conversations with me. And some loan officers may view that as inefficient, but for me, it's just another opportunity to build a bond with my client, right? If I can answer another yeah. question, talk to them for five minutes, it's yeah, and I, and I do think that that's an, um, you know, a proactive rather than a reactive move, you know, um, to the time that's required, you know, it's like this, I, you know, I travel a lot and yeah. I was always in the long line and I would see, see the TSA line and go, oh, I have to do that. But it required that I made an appointment and drove to the airport and parked and went in and got all the required, you know, you have to go to the airport yeah. to get your TSA. And I just didn't want to do that, right? And, and then I'd get in that long line again. And then I'd get in that long line another time. And finally, I said, this is crazy. All the time that I'm wasting in this line, I could have spent just getting the TSA, you know, approval. And now I can go through the fast line. So, you know, if you're listening in, what we're talking about is making sure that, you know, you do the, it, it's my favorite saying in the world. Les Brown said, if you'll do what's hard, your life will be easy. If you do what's easy, your life will be hard. I like that. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's and super true. That's it. You know, put the effort in in the front side so that the back side of this can be much more, um, you know, pleasurable for both you and the experience for the client, you know, as well. And I, and I absolutely love that. So exactly. thank you for sharing that. And I don't want to divulge all your little details. I just thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah. Um, so let's move on to getting the lead, you know, from a marketing perspective. And of course, you know, you and I were at mile high. And one of the things that we heard um, from um, 
uh, oh my gosh, Brian Stevens. I couldn't think of his first name. My husband's name is Brian, for God's sake. Um, <laughs> but the thing is, I know another Brian Stevens. He happens to be my personal trainer. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, it's really funny. And uh, so Brian Stevens, you know, talked to us about video. And so I'm curious, without going into detail about that, because I'm actually going to have Brian on my show. But cool. um, what, maybe you can tell us what you're doing that's different because that was what, four weeks ago, you've been doing this for eight or nine weeks. So obviously you already started doing video. Yeah. What did you do that was, so tell us how you do everything, including what you did different and what you incorporated perhaps from what you heard from Brian Stevens. So from Brian, what uh, I took from him, which I have not implemented yet, and I am going to, I'm, I'm very okay. embarrassed about yeah. that, is, okay. is doing um, live video, Facebook Live. Uh, mm -hmm. I find live videos to be more fun. Mm -hmm. you know, I was just thinking of like, what, what, how can you make it entertaining? And I think the key is, because I've spoken to some other guys and gals as well, and they just say like, don't just talk about mortgages, talk about everything and anything right. uh, to keep it interesting. But regarding how to make my mortgage videos different, uh, what I do, or at least what I think I do very well, is make um, a lot of them entertaining. I put a lot of humor in there because the reality is, is that mortgages are very, very boring Yes. Uh, from a consumer's <laughs> perspective. I mean, because at the end of the day, they want a house. They don't want a mortgage. They don't want to deal with a bank or a lender, right? So uh, it's just throwing in humor, uh, humor in there. So I have like one of my videos that did quite well. Um, it was a video on how like a lot of consumers go to Credit Karma or Credit Wise to check their credit. And as lenders, we know that's not accurate. So yeah. yeah, so I spent half the video like hitting people with steel chairs, mm -hmm. <laughs> like it literally throughout it and it got, I don't know how many shares and how many views, but it did very well. And it's just <laughs> throwing in funny stuff like that right. to keep it interesting. But so the setup is I have a videographer come in once a week um, and then the whole thing takes maybe 40, 50 minutes, not even an hour to shoot. And it's just scheduled, right? So it's like right. every Thursday you come in at four, you come in at two, whatever we have it set at for that month. And this way I can't, like it keeps me accountable. Yeah, so you have to have your content available. You have to know what you want to talk about. Right. Yeah, well, to, to be honest, with the content's quite easy. And yes. for those of you thinking what type of content can I come up with, um, it's quite simple. What are, like, think of the top 20 questions that your clients ask you. That's your content. Get me out. Right. Yeah. yeah it, it's not that difficult. So, uh, and the other thing that I will say as well is not to overthink the content of the video. Because uh, we, especially given the nature of our business with compliance, we have to be careful with what we say. Obviously, think about that carefully. I never talk about interest rates ever. Um, not, not one time, um, unless I'm talking about the market in general, but I won't say a specific number to stay compliant. The New York banking department is very strict, so I, I don't mess with that. Um, so what I was getting into is you don't want to overthink the video because at, at the end of the day, the majority of the people, even though I put so much effort into my video, I understand the reality is that mortgages again are boring and people aren't really going to watch the whole thing on average the video is anywhere from 50 to 130 seconds but people will do another thing so uh, i say the main things that you want to get across is that you're in the mortgage business and that you're an expert and make sure that each video looks kind of different to capture their attention because otherwise it's just the same thing from week to week Right. And yeah, the, the content honestly is not that important, in my opinion, at least. No, because what they want to do is they want to know who you are. You know, we know in sales, it's the know, like, and trust, right? Um, yeah. They know what we do. They like us generally, right? But they don't trust us enough to send us business because they don't know who we are. And yeah, so that's a great point. video does, it allows us to... Um, highlight or, and shine a spotlight on our personality, right? And that's really what's going to attract and draw people um, to us. And it's not just goofy personality. You do have to thread in there the fact that you are a lender and that you are an expert in your marketplace and that you have that credibility. 
but really getting them to like you and want to follow you and feel that they, you know, know you as, you know, a person. And I think that that really is the key. And so I like, you know, in your case, you've taken the funny route and I think that's great. Um, you know, like the, the humorous, more humorous route. Um, I think for others, you know, it might be, um, you know, a passion that they have that they're sharing with others and that those, they're drawn because of the passion that they have for whatever it is. You know, we know Katie Parsons, right? One of the yeah. things that she does is she takes right. pictures of uh, birds and, you know, things like that. And the Amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. And, amazing. and that's just something Luckily. that other people are drawn to, you know, yeah. and she doesn't usually go with the, the humor route. And so make sure that it's true to you and that you're aligned with, you know, who you are. So I want to ask you a follow-up right. question then on this is that, you know, it's one thing to put a bunch of videos out and we all do, we put it out, we put them out and then we go, oh gosh, I hope I get a thousand views and I hope people like it. And so what are you doing to amplify it, to boost it? Are you paying for ads? Are you boosting it? Are you tagging people? Are you posting in groups? Are you doing, uh, you know, what are you doing that gets the attention so that we actually get business? Yeah, it's, it's quite specific and very simple because it's all on autopilot. All I have to do is click two buttons and it's done. So um, all the videos, I will boost them on to Facebook and on Instagram. And I target realtors, uh, real estate attorneys and home inspectors. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'll target other loan officers, but not, not all the time. It depends on the video because it's, it's nice for recruiting purposes to bring people in for the company. Right. Um, but not all the time. So what happens, this actually happened um, yesterday and it's happened quite a few times is that I got a random email from a realtor saying, Hey Ben, you don't know me. We've never spoken. Um, but I referred my client, you know, X, Y, Z, whatever her name was, um, to reach out to you. I don't know if she's reached out yet. Um, but I saw all your videos on Instagram and I love all the content that you put out there. Thank you so much. So, yeah, yeah, I love that. Well, and, and how, and so if the content is consumer based, yeah. um, how, how are you, are you, are you doing this from your personal page or from your business page and how are consumers consuming this? <laughs> so that's the funny thing is that I don't target consumers directly with those videos because okay. I feel that you can't narrow it down enough, enough. Um, at least locally here it might be different for whoever else is watching this but uh, i've tried doing it and especially the type of the style of video is not good for consumer uh lead generation because it's i'm not doing any hard selling in the video all i'm doing is educating and demonstrating that i do mortgages in you know a funny playful way yeah. so and because there is, there's no specific call to action other than all I do is say, you know, my tagline, which is, you know, I'm your favorite British mortgage broker, right? <laughs> and it's funny because I run into people at networking events and that's yeah. like, like, hey, you're the British mortgage broker. And I'm like, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. There's a, there's a friend or a colleague of mine, you know, um, who works at Annie Mac and he's, tra uh, I don't know, I say Tran the mortgage man. And, uh, you know, so he does videos and does that very thing. And they're like, you're Tran, oh my gosh. Yeah. Or Stan or whatever. And, you know, so yeah, find that angle that, that uh, you know, is really cool. And I, and I imagine that really helps you a lot. I had, I hired a loan officer probably 25 years ago that was a Marine and he was a mechanic also. And um, so we had a lot of fun with him, you know, being the mechanic, you know, the loan mechanic and, you know, the Marine who you can trust and, and another guy who was a skydiver, and he was just, he was a skydiving loan officer, and cool. um, he always you know was was sharing pictures at that time because we didn't have video, just pictures you know that he would have in his really old fashioned you know folder that we used when we met with clients. <laughs> Right. As opposed to we had nothing. Oh, so he would show it to them when he met with the clients. Yeah, when he met with them, he would have like pictures of, you know, a collage of pictures of him <laughs> diving and have it, have it in his folder, you know, saying oh. this is our company and this is me. Because, you know, before digital, this is way before digital. But, but the concept is still there, you know, as something that highlights you that, you know, may, becomes a magnet rather than something that you have to chase. And I think that when you, when you market to everybody, you end up marketing to nobody. Yeah. 
and you want to be able to market to, to those people. So thank exactly. you so much for sharing that. So what, what's on the docket for you in 2020? So you mentioned about Brian Stevens. So you're probably going to try to do some Facebook live to local community uh, yeah. restaurants and, you know, yoga instructors, whatever the case may be, uh, you know, just try to expand that a little bit more. But what else is on the docket for you for 2020? Basically, everything needs to go up, 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 up. Yeah. Uh, in terms of like, I, I thought, okay, I'm doing one video a week. That's cool. It's like, no, uh, especially after. So we had the AIM Fuse event in yes. Las Vegas, uh, which was mm -hmm. massive. And Gary Vee is like, you guys should be putting out 50 pieces of content a day. Right. Like, right. like, okay, that's a bit much for me. But you need a job. Uh, yeah, you have yeah. a job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but even if I don't do 50 a day, I could do one or two. Yeah. Right. I could do one or two a day as opposed to just doing one a week. And, you know, cause I always thought to myself, Hey, it's too much. You're going to drive people crazy. But I think you're just going to like, cause again, at the end of the day, you, I always say this to myself, like I'm not that special and you know, all other loan officers, neither are you, you know, you're not that special. Whereas if you post one thing a day that you're going to ruin someone's day. And if you do, that person is crazy and you don't want to work you with them anyway. anyway. Yeah. 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 So that, that's what I'm like telling myself now. It's like, how can I uh, increase the content? So another thing I want to do, Jen, like we have here is uh, I want to start podcasting uh, locally. Yeah. Right? So I want to bring in, like you said, like a local yoga studio to <laughs> showcase them and really get to know yeah. uh, businesses sort around Sort of an all us. about town, right? And all about, all about town, New York. Yeah, ex yeah, exactly. So I'm um, doing that type of stuff and just basically 10xing. I hate saying 10xing because every, everyone says it. 8x, 12x, whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah but that's basically it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it's, let's just say quadrupling yeah. uh, all the content, the, the, the type of content, diversifying it. Um, also LinkedIn is huge. For, and that's what I learned from, uh, from Mile High. I never posted on LinkedIn. And that's something I'm going to start doing a lot as well. And just basically pushing myself out there like an absolute madman. And uh, I think it's a great way to get business to come to you as yeah. opposed to you going to it, which for me, uh, I really like that. I don't like doing cold calls or any of that stuff. That's not who I am or it's my style. I, I just like to put myself out there and uh, if you want to work with me and you like what I'm putting out there, great. If you don't, no problem. There are tons of excellent loan officers in the business, so it's all good. Well, and it's efficient too. And of course it aligns with, you know, everything that I do in my coaching, you know, the lifestyle. And it's not, again, lifestyle is not about having all the fancy cars and whatnot. That's, that's part of it. But um, lifestyle is, you know, being fulfilled, have that freedom to do what you want. And when you mm -hmm. can attract business rather than have to chase it that will save time and allow for you to enjoy all the work that you put in right yeah. and be able to do the things that you want to do that that make you happy so i love that i love that thought process so you know when we talk about uh this as we're kind of finishing up our, our conversation today you know this reminds me and if and I talk about it all the time, but it's the jab, 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 jab hook, right? Is that we're just putting information out there that, that is funny and entertaining and social, right? Keeping social media social, keeping LinkedIn professional, you know, the social and then the hook, you know, the hook it's, you know, fun, fun, fun. And oh, by the way, I'm a lender and fun, okay. fun, fun. And oh, by the way, I'm a lender. And I love that you've done it in a humorous way because it, that it doesn't become that, you know, real dry um, aspect of it. So, so one of the things I love to ask everybody as we kind of, as we close up here is mm -hmm. the name of a book that you're reading right now that you'd like to share with someone. If you're in the midst of it and you're not sure about mm -hmm. it, then maybe a book you've already read and perhaps a quote that you live by or a mantra that you live by. Um, there isn't a specific, uh, I am listening to Jordan Belfort's uh, Wolf of Wall Street. Mm -hmm. uh, I forget, that's not the name of it, but uh, I'm listening to his book, which is good. But um, one book that I really, really love is uh, Selling with Noble Purpose. Okay, Selling uh, with Noble point. Purpose, yeah. Yeah, Selling with Noble Purpose. Uh, it's a very, very... Because what I found, Jen, at least with me in the beginning of or well, one stage of my career, not the beginning, I was very focused on the units and the numbers. Mm -hmm. Notice that I haven't talked about it because it's not like it's not something that I actively think about. 
Mm -hmm. And the reason is, is because if I do, I find that that's what I focus on. Whereas what I need to focus on is customer experience, which yeah. is something that I really took away from that book, Selling with Noble Purpose. I think I've read it three, four times already. Um, it's, it's really, really good. And it's basically just, it, it comes down to doing the right thing. Obviously, it gets way more specific than that, right? right. Because it's a book. Um, but it's just doing the right thing by your client, the consumer, um, and, and doing that going above and beyond just creates an experience. And that's, I would actually say, is kind of the foundation to everything. Like, that's how I was like, hey, you know, my clients are always asking this question. They have anxiety about this. It's keeping them up till midnight. Why don't I just do make a video about them? it and yeah. send it to them before they even think of it? Right. right. The, the anticipation, that's where the client experience really blossoms, you know, is yeah. anticipating their needs, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that, that's one of it. The other one, sorry, I know you said one, but there. That's there's, okay. No, there's, go um, on. <laughs> Tim, uh, Tim Grover's Relentless. Uh -huh. uh, I've read that probably another five, six times. I read that at least twice a year. And that's just pure tenacity competition uh i love it because it's it it drives and it really tells me because a lot of people in my life say hey ben you know relax you're working too hard and in my mind i'm not working hard enough right and then i i read relentless and i was like i'm doing the right thing yeah thing. yeah well in finding you know finding the right um balance i hate that word but you know just finding prioritizing things that are you know most important to you um, I love that. I love that. Well, listen, Ben, it's been a pleasure. I'm so happy that I met you at Mile High and hopefully I'll meet Likewise. you again there next year. Yes. Um, you know, I, I found it. I loved it. I loved it. Other than the game, other than going to the freezing cold game, which I don't know. <laughs> to it. I, don't think you, you I didn't make it. it. Yeah, that's funny. Be glad, you didn't. Be glad you didn't make it to the Rockies game because yeah. it was freezing cold. In ah. <laughs> And we ended up all leaving because it was just too cold to sit there. And, uh, but anyway, it was just a pleasure meeting you. And I look forward to us having a really nice, long business relationship. Likewise, uh, and I wish you the best in 2020 and way thank beyond. You. And thank you so much. For you sharing. as well. I appreciate Great it. Thank you, Jen. You shared with us today. All righty. Take care. Thank you for listening to Mortgage Lending Mastery. Looking to streamline and launch your practice by accessing Jen's tools, courses, classes, presentations, and resources? Visit jenduplessis.com to learn about the features and benefits thousands of other professionals have experienced by enrolling in Jen's Lifetime Membership Program. Isn't it about time you consider a coach to take your business to new heights? Contact Jen to start your application process today. Thanks again, and be sure to tune in next week.